Hello there, and welcome to this damn fool idealistic crusade. Today I'm going to go through the number of sale Blu-rays I picked up uh, and the various sales that have run the past month or two. So these will be titles from, of course, the Barnes & Noble July Criterion sale, uh, the MVD sale they had uh, blowing out some Arrow video titles, and then also the Warner Archive 4 for 44 sale. Picked up a number of uh, those titles, which just came in. And then also a brand new 4K release that I just couldn't pass up the uh, sale price on the new Steelbook edition. So to start, unfortunately, all I have right now is one criterion I picked up from the Barnes & Noble sale, which I'll show you here. So I did manage to grab a copy of The Asphalt Jungle. I'm trying to chip away at all the criterions I've been missing out on. I've been, I've been slacking on it, unfortunately, too much uh, because there's so many Blu-rays and Laserdiscs and various things I'm, I'm trying to get all at the same time. Uh, but unfortunately, this year, it seems COVID really impacted the supplies of the Barnes & Noble sale. So my own store never got restocked, and I was trying to get the Bruce Lee set, which I did manage to get online when it came back in stock. But that's not supposed to ship out until August 10th, so I'm still having to wait for it. But that was, that was what I was going to try and focus for. So I kind of held off on getting a lot of other titles because I really wanted to get the Bruce Lee set while it was at the sale price. But I did pick up the Asphalt Jungle because it's one that the, my wow, it's one that my store actually had, and I meant to pick it up for a while. It's from the uh, it was done master uh, it was mastered from a new 2K scan and uh, is a real improvement over the uh, LD and DVD I have in terms of visuals. And of course, you get nice new extras and such, plus some of the DVD extras carry over. is the inner, the discard, and of course the usual Criterion booklet. Give you a closer up view, give you a closer view of the jacket. I couldn't resist the new 4K release of Spartacus. This is the limited exclusive Best Buy Steelbook and it's definitely the release to go for. The standard uh, version just uses the 2015 Blu-ray art, which I already have that and that has a slip case. Um, that Blu-ray is included in this set, but uh, this is just a wonderful, wonderful package. This is the J card, which I'll take off so you can see the actual disc art. So here is the lovely steel book. Uh, this was currently on sale for less than the actual standard release. And again, it's a Best Buy exclusive. The rear is gorgeous. I'm not really one for steel books, but again, this being cheaper than the standard release and being such a gorgeous image, uh, I, I couldn't say no, so I went ahead and grabbed this while it was on sale. Got some lovely, nice interior art and the new 4K disc on top of, as I said before, the same 2015 Blu-ray is included. No booklet or anything. Of course, it did come with a digital copy, which I don't really <laughs> have much of a use for those, but this was just a no-brainer while it was at the lovely low sale price. Uh, next up are a few discs from Shout Factory who have been apparently blowing out titles at various Walmarts. So if you look at your local Walmart, uh, admittedly their, their ever-shrinking uh, Blu-ray section, there are some catalog titles and some cult films mixed in on both DVD and Blu-ray. Uh, but the Shout Factory discs are mixed in for far less than what they usually go for, well under their list price. It's really helpful that these Shout discs are now turning up for cheaper prices because um, I've never gotten too many Shout discs because their price points are usually well above even other specialty labels. So I'm usually priced out of releases I would normally like to get. Um, and it also doesn't help that a lot of their stuff is recycling, like masters from MGM and and uh, and other other studio labels. So they do add extra features and such, but you're really buying the same transfer over again at a higher price point for all the extras and such. Um, but a number of these have turned up. They're all between ten dollars and thirteen dollars, which is definitely a lot better than thirty or thirty-five. And I really wish a lot of their Hammer titles would show up for cheaper prices because. They've been doing great jobs on those, but it's hard to afford, you know, twenty-five to thirty dollars per film. You know, that's 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 Criterion prices. You know, um, so it yeah, it, it definitely helps when you find them for cheap. So I went ahead and picked up this one because it's apparently going out of print, and that's the uh, Shout Select uh, Spy Number Four, the release of Roadhouse. 
which is a two disc set stacked with new extras and a newer transfer that unfortunately is is not perfect it has some issues but uh it is still you know a nicer presentation in terms of the overall package than the MGM Blu-ray but apparently MGM is doing some relicensing so uh this one is apparently going to go out of print um hasn't really started fetching high prices yet but they are going up on eBay and this was literally one of the under $10 titles. So I just went ahead and grabbed it because there's literally only one copy at my store. And again, the, the stores have the shelf tags, but it's it's totally random what's going to turn up in your store. So uh, sometimes they have slip covers, Sometimes they don't. It just depends. I picked up this one that I've wanted to get for a while. This is the special edition release of Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, which... Uh, I believe it's it's a new credit is a new scan, so it does look slightly better than the old MGM Blu-ray. Um, it does include a new interview, but it's not as stacked as the Roadhouse release. It's just a single disc. Um, this does have a slipcover at at some locations, but this one didn't. Uh, Shout Factory is kind of kind of known for you may or may not get a slip cover so if, if you're into slip covers you know that is something to be wary of that these copies may not have them now this one i don't think ever did have a slip cover but this is actually a newer release so it was surprising it was there but uh, this is the spine 69 shout select release of the underrated someone to watch over me which is one of really scott's uh, underrated 1980s films that uh, had not been on Blu-ray before this. It just had a really old DVD, so and I'd never gotten that. So it was great that this was released, and it does have some nice interviews, so it does have some extra features and such. So um, it's really great these are turning up for cheap. And then next to two titles I picked up from the Arrow sale that was done at the MVD website, which is, I believe, the U.S. Uh, main outlet for um, Arrow video releases. And again, these are both MGM titles, so I think they're renegotiating deals, so um, these Arrow discs are going out of print. Um, they had already sold out of some discs before I, I found out about the sales, so I missed out on the uh, film Dillinger, directed by John Milius, which would have been really cool to pick up, but uh, unfortunately I missed out on that. I did manage to get The Big Knife, which is the Robert Aldrich picture that's um, actually quite underrated, and this Arrow release is a really nice version uh, has some nice extra features, great artwork, has the booklet and reversible sleeve, uh, but you will have to check your copies of this because they did have a pressing flaw at first that uh, was missing some of the film. So you have to go on uh, the Arrow website and double check your copies at a particular run, run point. I think it's about an hour and a half in. And it, it's like missing one particular scene. So if, if yours is an uh, uncorrected copy, Arrow will replace it for you. But uh, happy to finally pick this up. And then again, also MGM, I picked up Terror in a Texas Town, which was directed by Joseph Lewis, who directed uh, many other important films, uh, but most particularly known for uh, two film noir classics, The Big Combo, and uh, for me especially, Gun Crazy, which is the underrated uh, precursor to Bonnie and Clyde in a lot of ways. So I have wanted to get this for a while. It's one of those Aero discs that uh, is a title that most people are not aware of, but they did a nice spiffy edition with some extras, original artwork and booklet, and uh, really happy to pick this up and uh, definitely glad I was able to get it before it goes completely out of print. But uh, yeah, I don't know if the sale is still running, but MVD was blowing these out for about $10 or less, and some titles were down to $4.99. They were blowing out copies of Ronin for $4.99, which made me think, why'd I buy it? Why'd I pre-order that? Because <laughs> um, I'm such a big fan. But I'm also then hopeful that it might get a UHD release uh, if if the original Arrow release goes out of print. And then last, I have this nice stack of Warner Archive Blu-rays I picked up from the 4 for 44 sale. All titles are available from the WB Shop website. Uh, and while they're on sale, they will be $11 each. And uh, the free shipping threshold actually works if you order seven titles because it counts the original list price and not the sale price. Normally you have to spend, I believe it's like 100 or $150 to get free shipping on the uh, WB shop site. So I went ahead and ordered seven because there's, there's always so many Warner Archive titles that I haven't picked up yet and that I really, really want. And they included a lot of the newer ones, and there was one in particular that I was already purchasing. So it, it definitely enticed me into just going for the sale. And then also um, 
you know, there was another one I meant to get for a long time. So just going alphabetically, I picked up, of course, The Bad and the Beautiful, which is one of, one of, if not the great picture about Hollywood uh, backlot intrigue. If, if you had to term this as, as any particular genre or type of film, uh, brand new scan and beautiful to see a new release of this because it was pretty much stuck on an old uh, DVD that was mostly out of print. It was a very early, um, well, I think it was from the early 2000s, but it was in a snapper case. That's how old of a uh, Warner release it was. But um, it does include the old uh, TCM documentary on Lana Turner and then some of the original um, scoring music cues, which is great because not a lot of that survives. Um, but then the only other extra is, is a trailer, so it has not gotten like a big deluxe treatment. This was one that I had meant to order for a long, long time, never got around to it. And then uh, when Carl Reiner just passed away, it just made me go, I have to get this. So I picked up The Man With Two Brains, which is... A really great Warner uh, archive release because they did a new scan and really rescued it from the really crummy old releases. Um, before this point, there was no widescreen version. It was all the old school um, pan and scan master. That was on the old snapper case DVD as well. The laser disc isn't that great. The VHS tape isn't great. So this is really the way to see this film because before this point, again, you, you couldn't even see it properly in widescreen. And they did do a brand new 2K scan. This uh, Carl Reiner said this was his favorite of his films, and I'm really looking forward to revisiting it on this release because I haven't seen it in a long time, and I never bought the DVD because I knew it was really crappy. So I've been hoping they would redo it, and so now I'm finally getting around to getting a copy. Now, this is the big one. This is the one that I was shocked that they were doing, that it's got extras, and this is a title I have requested to be redone for years. It's one of the worst DVD uh, fiascos in the whole uh, DVD format. And that is the restoration by the uh, UCLA Film and Television Archive of the classic Mystery of the Wax Museum, the second of the Warner Brothers two-strip Technicolor pre-code horror films, both directed by Michael Curtiz, uh, the first of them being the original Dr. X. Um, but this film, of course, was later remade more famously as the 3D House of Wax. Uh, but this this is the stronger and grittier film of the two. And these these two strip Technicolor horror films, if you've never seen them, they pack a real punch, particularly because they're before the implementation of the production code. But the restoration on this is is really important because the uh, previous DVD release was treated as an extra on House of Wax, and they messed up the color royally because they uh, somehow changed the greens of Two Strip Technicolor to blue. So if you saw this film on any version of House of Wax as the special feature, you saw a completely wrong and mistaken version that really looked awful. Um, so what I had to do was go and track down the Laserdisc double feature set that also has Dr. X, uh, which was the first time the color version was released on home video. And um, that's how I've watched it all these years. So this is a beautiful new restoration. They also did a, a, an extraordinary job on the audio. They, res they were able to save um, some extra bits that had kind of been lost or had been dialed down in the surviving mix because it is very noisy. This film was thought lost for a very long time. And the only existing copies were of a black and white alternative version. Uh, but the lone print was found in Jack Warner's own personal archive and has now finally been scanned anew and uh, has been restored with modern digital tools in both the picture and sound. Uh, what's also great about this release is that not only do you have the Film Foundation credit and the UCLA credit, uh, but this actually has a brand new commentary by Scott McQueen, who's one of the great... Um, not just film historians, but particularly uh, horror film historians. And his commentaries are always just a, a goldmine of information and very entertaining at the same time. So I'm really excited to check out the commentary and uh, the clips so far that UCLA posted on their YouTube channel of the restoration samples are just mind-blowing, particularly when you know how bad this film has looked through the years, and then from that awful DVD version that we were stuck with for a long time. it's it, That was really one of the worst DVDs ever made because it was so technically wrong and so historically inaccurate because 
when you're talking about two strip technicolor it's very very specific you know it's it's primarily using two colors so when you get one of two colors wrong there's there's not much else you know to there's a very very little um elsewhere to go from from that so this this is probably i think the blu-ray of the year this is probably the home video release of 2020 um again the year's not over yet but I know most people have no idea what this film is, but but classic horror fans know. And just the fact that this film has finally been properly restored, and the even the audio has made great strides forward. Uh, this this is a real shocker of a release because you know I, I I thought it was just myself and a few others who were bemoaning this film's fate on the the awful DVD presentation. Next up, they included the two disc release of Reflections in a Golden Eye, the John Huston picture that was uh, rather interestingly photographed and presented in a sort of diffused uh, golden visual scheme that the original release prints were um, run as. This was done uh, around the time that Houston was playing around with various different photographic techniques, like what he did uh, on the film version of Moulin Rouge, and uh, most especially the film version of Moby Dick, where they purposely desaturated the Technicolor prints, much to Technicolor's consternation. So for the longest time, all you could see was the regular release version of this film that just has normal colors. Uh, but when Warner did the DVD version, they recreated the uh, sort of golden diffused presentation. And it's a very bizarre but striking presentation. So uh, Warner Archive beautifully has upgraded this to Blu-ray and has made it a two-disc set. So the first disc has the uh, original intent golden version. And of course, the disc is actually gold. So that's, that's a nice touch. And then you have the second disc, which is the uh, a actual general release version with normal colors so you get the choice to watch a really well done transfer on either disc and because it's not sharing the same disc they're not you know sharing bitrate as well so you get a pressed bd50 dual layer disc for each version of the film whichever you prefer um, but artistically the the golden version is the way to go and it's amazing that we have the opportunity to see it in the original intended way but since that's not for everyone, they were nice enough to include the actual general normal color version. This is a, a newer release, and it's a two-disc affair, so I was very surprised that it was included in the sale, but very happy to go ahead and pick it up. And then to chip away further at my collection of Sidney Lumet films, I finally picked up the archive release of Running on Empty, which is another of his 1980s films that's really underrated and has one of the great uh, River Phoenix performances of his very unfortunately an untimely short career but uh this this is an underrated film pretty much like every film that Cindy Lumet directed and like a number of his 80s and 90s films it was stuck for years on a crappy old um open matted transfer of the dvd was 133 so was the laser disc just like the vhs tape um it did finally get a widescreen release in region two like some warner discs and then warner archive did a widescreen dvd r basically porting that, and then eventually just decided to do a new scan and upgraded it to Blu-ray. So I've been meaning to get this. So I was, I'm was, i just checking off all the titles I haven't picked up yet. And of course, if I had the time and money and if I was rich, I would just buy every Warner Archive disc <laughs> because they always do a, just a, a, an exemplary job. But yeah, this is just one I've been meaning to pick up for a while. And here's another one I've wanted to get since it was announced. Uh, also, new scan, and this is a real genre classic. So I picked up the original and proper Village of the Damned, the 1960 MGM British science fiction slash horror thriller classic that uh, if you've not seen this film and you're a genre fan, you, you need to see this film. It's that important. Um, it's, it's a remarkable film. It holds up extremely well. It's very well plotted and edited. It's a very taut, uh, low-key, but very, uh, very inventive and involving thriller. And it, it definitely gets better with every successive rewatch. Um, this did get a nice DVD release as a double feature with the quasi-sequel Children of the Damned, where it did get a commentary, which is ported over here, and it's a very good Steve Haberman commentary if you haven't listened to it. Um, I, I wish they would have done both of the films because the, the second film, while it's not a true sequel um, and it's more of a, a moral play in a lot of ways, it does have some interesting ideas and I like, I, I like it very much. It's just, 
it it's kind of it's it's its own entity but they they made sure to sell it as a sequel to village of the damned um so i'm hoping that gets a release at some point but at least we have a dvd i do have the old laser disc double feature as well but on that you get an open matted presentation of this which um you get a little more on top and bottom, but you lose some on the sides. And this film is, you know, supposed to be shown widescreen. It's very, even though it's black and white and very low key and, you know, didn't have the biggest budget in the world, it's a very visual experience. And once you see this film, you will never forget, you know, the uh, creepiest blonde haired, identical alien space children, <laughs> you know, as long as you shall live. And then lastly, this was a must. So the one animated title I picked up was the new Warner Archive release of the Tex Avery Screwball Classics Volume 1. This was a complete shocker because uh, the Tex Avery shorts have been, you know, long suppressed and out of print for a long time. Uh, there were a handful of European PAL DVD releases that animation collectors have imported. And just like getting uncut uh, Looney Tunes and Tom and Jerry HD releases, a lot of us had just kind of given hope on beautiful new uncut classic animation hitting blu-ray but uh this was just an absolute treasure of an of a release and it's amazing this has happened it's not in 100 percent chronological order because they're still going through the process of restoring these shorts and getting best, best available elements um jerry beck the great animation historian was involved in this release um so it is beautifully put together um, the classic Tex Avery shorts that you know are are absolutely stupendous on this release. And again, this this was just a shock. And it's great it came out on the archive label because you get a fully maxed out dual layer um, Blu-ray disc, a BD50 with uh, you know beautiful mastering, which you probably wouldn't have gotten from the standard studio line, as is evidenced by most. And it's, it's very much, you know, no frills. There's no booklet or anything, but that, of course, keeps costs down. And since this is volume one, they are doing more volumes as the restorations progress. So this goes hand in hand with the Popeye volumes, which I also hope to get soon, and really makes me hope and pray that the Fleischer Supermans will be coming at some point. That's, that's what my fingers are really crossed for. Um, because the DVD release still has some audio issues, but the uh, HD scans they did back in the mid-2000s already look so much better than anything else we have. So I'm, I'm hoping we get more classic animation. There should be more Tex Avery on the way. Um, they've just done a third volume of the Popeye shorts, and they've announced the, on the regular studio line the uh, Bugs Bunny anniversary collection. So it looks like we've finally got the ball rolling on classic animation on Blu-ray, which is a really, really fantastic thing. So anyway, that does it for the sale Blu-rays that I've picked up recently. As always, I always wish I could pick up more, but I, I always try and chip away at things that I feel are really important or, you know, titles that are at such great discounts. Uh, I would have picked up more Criterion titles, but, uh, you know, all these other sales happened at the same time, and I do have the Bruce Lee set uh, on its way to me once it uh, ships out on August 10th, once the stock uh, comes back in. So once that comes in, I will do a... Uh, do a, a do a whole set review uh, once I've had time to go through all the transfers and extras and stuff. And uh, I know a lot of people have already done theirs since they've already gotten their box set copies. But uh, you know, I'm I'm definitely going to go ahead and do a, a full review of that as well. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed this and maybe saw some titles that you're interested in picking up for your own collections. And as always, thanks so much for watching. <laughs>